We have asked and been told now a lot of about the safety of certain weight loss surgeries after Lisa Marie Presley's cause of death revealed she died of a small bowel obstruction caused by bariatric surgery years ago. But just how risky is it? Thankfully, Pyle Coley, Dr. Pyle Coley is here to give us some insight. We thank you for being here. So, hey Dr. Coley, what is bariatric surgery and who is it intended for? So bariatric surgery is weight loss surgery, and it's really intended for people who are unable to maintain a healthy body weight despite diet, despite lifestyle, despite all the things that they've tried to do. And there's many different ways to do bariatric surgery. So it, traditionally, it's been kind of an open surgery. You have a large incision, and you rearrange the plumbing, so to speak. Uh, gastric bypass is what it's been called, or ruin y gastric bypass as well. But more recently, we started doing it laparoscopically, so that you have small, tiny little incisions, and you can staple the stomach or put a sleeve to shrink the size of the stomach and really help people to lose weight. So how common are these complications that she had years after the surgery, right? Elisa Marie's case is not common at all. So it is common to get scar tissue in the abdomen after you have surgery. In fact, nine out of 10 people, and this is not just weight loss surgery, but any type of abdominal surgery, your appendix, your gallbladder, anything else you might have had, will have scar tissue because as the belly is healing, it lays down scar. Just like when our skin gets cut, we make scar tissue to heal it. What can happen over time is small bowel obstruction, which means the small bowel or the small intestines can actually get tangled up in that scar tissue. Now, if you don't release that tangle, they can start to choke because the blood supply to that part of the intestine can sort of get cut off, and then that part can die off and cause an infection. So, you know, 9% of people will have small bowel obstructions from the scar tissue or adhesions after an abdominal surgery, but it's really rare mm. to die from having this kind of a problem. So I'm really shocked that Lisa Marie, who had been having abdominal pain for months, reportedly didn't actually seek medical care sooner. Is there anything else that she might have been experiencing at the time other than abdominal pain to show like, hey, this is what's happening in my body? So probably she was feeling ill in general because if the food is not moving down and coming out of the other end, it starts to back up. So you can get nausea, you can get vomiting, you can get bloating as the intestines sort of start to distend. You can get a condition called obstipation, which is an extreme form of constipation, where you're just not moving anything from below. And the problem is, it's a spiral. So the more constipated you get, the more nauseated you feel, then you reach for pain medications. And, and we saw that Lisa Marie had opioids in her system to help with the pain. And that actually puts the gut to sleep even more. And so then you've got a functional problem and a mechanical problem from the scar tissue. Man. All right. Well, we're going to totally switch gears here. I want to talk to you about aspartame. I've heard about it when it's associated with diet sodas and even yogurt. Now the WHO, the World Health Organization, they're saying that it might be cancer causing, but is this a bad thing? Because I know a lot of people, I think we all do that, like are addicted to soda, especially diet soda. And so like, is this, should those people be worried? Are you guys diet soda drinkers? I am a diet soda baby once, twice, three, four, five times a week. <laughs> really? How many do you have? If I, if four a week, three a week. Why are you talking in that accent? Okay. Because <laughs> okay. I feel guilty about having it now that I heard the aspartame news. I feel well, aspartame. She hasn't even said anything. I'm aspartame is what I feel. Aspartame. That's how I feel. Confessions of a diet soda <laughs> yeah. addict. Right? Yeah, right. Hashtag that. Yeah. Thank you. So I would say uh, five times a week is probably a little bit too much, but diet soda in moderation, I don't want us to worry about it. And the WHO didn't actually give a very strong level of warning to this. They said it's possibly carcinogenic, which is essentially the scientific community shrugging their shoulders and saying we don't know if it causes cancer. In fact, the grading that they gave it was one level below alcohol and tobacco, which we know are carcinogens. They're known carcinogens. They cause cancer. So, you know, the, the, the bottom line here is we're still trying to figure out what the dose of this of this aspartame that could be putting people at risk is. We know that excess consumption could be associated with risk, but a lot of the science is very contradictory, and that's one of the reasons the FDA and the WHO can't seem to see, see eye to eye on this. So if you had to have a Coke or Diet Coke right now, which one do you want your client to have? 100% Diet Coke. Okay. But okay. there's a third choice. Water. water. Yes. That's oh, right. That's that is a sparkling water. Now Put some carbon dioxide in it. It tastes kind of like Coke, right? I've heard sparkling water isn't great for your I heard it's not, you know, that's almost all I drink. Yeah. I heard that's not great for you either. Is that true? Well, the, the, anything carbonated can cause, obviously, changes with our enamel. It can also cause a little extra flatulence or gas formations. You can burp a little. You can have a little things. more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to sit next to you. I'm all, I get it. I get it. I'm just glad 
I'm sitting over yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Always oh, be comfortable to talk way. to your doctor. <laughs> 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 For six years. All right, this is changing gears here because this is a big issue globally, heat. And I'm talking the weather. In fact, I want you to hear this fact. The hottest 15 days on Earth ever recorded were in the past 15 days. Who is most at risk when we go outside? I mean, it's at 128 in Death Valley reaching all these kind of records. What's going on and who is most at risk? It's crazy what the weather patterns have been. And in fact, I saw a news story that somebody made a pizza by leaving it in their car. They cooked a pizza because that's how hot it got in the car. So imagine what's happening to our internal organs, to our brain, to everything. When it's that hot outside, we're riding around in a hot car or something. So, you know, really want to think about the extremes of age here. So little babies are, of course, at very high risk but also older adults because they can't regulate their body temperature. In How old is older adults, just so I can get Over the age of 60. Got it. Yeah, um, but it's really a continuum. And so if you're somebody who is maybe in your 50s, but you're not used to being outside or you're on medications, so heart medications, and as a cardiologist, I see patients every single day who walk to the office and they're literally in distress because many of these medications prevent your body from being able to regulate its temperature. Brain medications, so patients with neurological illnesses, if you're diabetic, and in fact, what I've even seen is that your mental health can get affected Whoa. based on the heat. So your irritability goes up, yes. your, your depression and fatigue go up because you're tired. You know, mild heat illness actually makes you a little bit more tired. Your eating patterns change and your metabolism changes. So it can have so many different effects on us that I think we're all at risk, but certainly some of those high risk groups that I mentioned. Yeah. Wow, that's really good to know about that mental health at the end. And if you, again, you know anyone, neighbors, check in on them, elderly uh, relatives, and check, check up for cooling centers within your city. Thanks as always, Dr. Coley, DBL Nation. Be sure to check out Dr. Coley's podcast, Heart of Medicine, you can find it wherever you get your podcasts.